Okay, it's Henry again, and this is the fourth and final work in progress video for my G System 172 scale Nero. And we are at the decal stage. So, this kit has quite a lot of decals. Two full uh, 8.5 by 11 sheets of water slide decals. Now, I'm not going to be using all of these for uh, actually multiple reasons. Um, at first, when I started painting this kit, I kind of decided that I wasn't going to use any of these decals at all, these block pattern decals. Because I figured the uh, gray that I was going to use was going to be too dark, and they weren't going to show up. But now that I've actually gotten the parts painted, I don't think it's too dark at all. I think these will show up perfectly well on these uh, grayish tan parts. So I think I am going to end up using these. My only reservation about it though is that I was planning to do some weathering. I wasn't going to do a lot of weathering, just some light weathering, a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of chipping, that's it. Um, that that kind of makes me worry that it's going to look too busy with all of these complex decals and then weathering on top. But uh, I think if I just keep the weathering to a real minimum, just the real, real light weathering, um, I think it'll turn out looking okay. So I'm, I am going to use these gray block pattern decals. Uh, they also give us the block patterns for the red and blue parts. These I'm not going to be using because these are not going to show up at all on my parts. And originally, uh, the blue parts that the kit comes molded in are like a really bright sky blue. As you can see here, they've got the little block patterns on there, and they show up just fine. But on top of my parts, which are a darker blue-green color, nah, that's not, uh-uh, no, that's not going to look very good. On top of it just being a different shade of blue, it's too light, and it's just not going to look good, I'm afraid. Also, for the red parts... That's way too similar. That's barely going to show up at all. Plus, one little uh, defect with the decals is that G-System didn't give us any red block pattern uh, decals for the feet. Here's the blue block patterns for the feet, but they didn't give us red ones for some reason. Uh, let's see. Oddly enough, it has red block patterns on the feet in the instruction manual, or not the instruction manual, the photos but they're not on the decal sheet anywhere. It's got parts for the torso and uh, the cockpit and the shoulders but no red block patterns for the feet. I don't know. Either way, not going to use them so it's really not that big a deal. And then we just got a bunch of generic caution markings. Uh, kind of wish they had a little bit more variety. I really like these but I'm definitely not using all of those and those are too big and just weird looking. But uh, I will be using a lot of these things and pretty much everything else. It's just these red and blue ones I'm going to kind of ignore. So uh, I've got my work cut out for me as far as decals go and this is going to take a while so I might as well go ahead and get started. Alright, so I'm in the middle of doing the decals and uh, it's turning out a little bit better than I thought it would. Here is the back skirt and they're actually pretty nice. They're not the uh, block patterns aren't too dramatic, but they're not too subtle. They're kind of just right. It is a slightly different shade of gray because the decals are in like a neutral gray and mine's in kind of a tan gray, but uh, it still looks good, I think. And the more I uh, put these decals on, the more glad I am that I went ahead and did them because a lot of these parts I feel like would be too bland if I didn't use the decals. So. I think uh, doing this was definitely a good idea. So this is the front right shoulder for the standard Nero. And I actually kind of like this. Uh, they actually tell you in words where it goes rather than having uh, numbers and letters like you would on a Bandai kit. It's actually a little bit easier to find out where you're decal is supposed to go. Some of these decals are very very large like this one that I'm about to put on right now. 
pretty much going to cover up this whole thing right here. And so you have to be very, very careful with this and hope that it doesn't tear. This one's making me kind of nervous. Alright, there we go. Let's see. Pull this guy off. Alright. Place it on like so. And to reposition this a little bit. Uh oh. Because all these block pattern decals are like form fitting to the parts that they go on. It's not just like just little caution markings where you can pretty much stick them anywhere. These have very precise dimensions where they're supposed to fit on because the decals, a lot of these are shaped exactly like the part that they're supposed to go on as you can see here. So, I'm, I'm not sure if these are the biggest decals. Uh, the G-System XS Gundam I did, the 1 to 100 scale one, had some pretty big decals on the propellant tanks and the uh, backpack, but these are also pretty big as well. I think the decals on the binders for the Nero Trainer type are probably going to be the biggest decals I've ever worked with. Smooth everything out here. Looks good. Okay. And then once this decal dries, I'll just uh, go in with a hobby knife and cut around where it's covering up the panel lines there. And then use the Mr. Mark softer to make the decal sort of settle around that panel line so that the panel line will actually be visible again. Alright, so now I'm just doing a little bit of dry brushing. I uh, got some Vallejo tan here. This is, what is this, Iraqi sand. Just a generic tan color. And obviously I'm using this on the tan parts. I'll use a light red and a light blue-green color for doing the red and blue-green parts. But uh, really nothing special here. Same dry brushing technique that I use on pretty much everything. Just to give these raised edges a little bit more definition. Now that the dry brushing is done, I'm moving on to chipping and uh, for the last few projects I've done weathering on, I've just used gray for the chipping, but this time I'm actually going to use metallics. Uh, I've got Mr. Metal Color Iron, which is really, really dark gunmetal color, and then Mr. Metal Color uh, Stainless Steel, which is a little bit lighter. I'm going to be doing a two-tone uh, chipping on here. I'll do the dark chipping first, and then go in with a little bit and do some lighter chipping and also on my last few weathered projects I've gotten really carried away with the chipping so I'm trying my best not to get too awfully carried away with this. The feet are gonna have a bit of chipping on them because those are the parts that obviously come in the most contact with other other surfaces so the feet are going to be pretty weathered but uh, the rest of the body I'm going to really try to be as conservative as possible with my chipping because I don't want to uh, make the kit too visually busy with all those gray block pattern decals that I just put on and uh, it's just kind of a, a practice in self-restraint because I'm trying to perfect this look of 
like it's only been in battle maybe one or two times. It doesn't really have a whole lot of weathering or a whole lot of wear on it. Just enough that you can see that it's there, but not so much that it's overwhelming. So, that's pretty much the look I'm going for. Anyway, uh, here are the red feet. As you can see, uh, you can see that two-tone chipping. I've got the the dark colored chipping, and then in the center of some of the larger dark areas, I've gone in with the uh, stainless steel, and it just has a look of being a little bit more of a deeper uh, chip in the paint. See, this foot's not chipped quite as much as the other one, so about the level of weathering I'm going for right here. that top coating is finished uh, coming up on the two things on this kit that I'm sort of the most nervous about uh, the first is this beam saber and this entire beam saber is one part and it's clear resin and the reason I'm nervous about it is because I had to paint the clear resin uh, which obviously meant I couldn't use any primer and then I had to put masking tape on top of it so I could paint the handle and uh, you know they always say that you have to use primer on resin otherwise the paint is just going to peel right off so this is the least tacky masking tape I had and uh, I'm just really hoping that this clear blue paint does not get peeled off of the blade So far, so good. Alright, first piece of masking tape gone. And everything else on this kit has got primer on it, except for the clear parts for obvious reasons. So, I've never uh, had to paint a clear resin and then mask on top of it. Usually with clear parts you don't have to do any masking because it's like a camera lens or a visor or something, but in this case it's a beam saber and it looks like it turned out successfully. Really, really, uh, really, really glad that worked. I was afraid that the paint was just going to be peeled right off, but it wasn't, so there you go. A very nice looking beam saber, uh, if I do say so myself. Did the light blue uh, just a little bit down at the bottom and then gradually got darker with the blue as I got towards the end. So that's done. Uh, other part I was nervous about was the photo etch parts. Uh, the last time I did photo etch was back in 2011. And that was the last G-System kit I did, which was the 1-100 to scale XS Gundam. And I did not have a pleasant 
experience with the photo etch mainly because it was my first time dealing with it and I wasn't prepared I didn't have any photo etch scissors uh, I was cutting the photo etch parts off with my uh, plastic nippers or hobby knife and then I was using super glue to glue them in place and it was just it, I, I already don't really like super glue very much so it was just a big mess uh, a lot of the parts came out looking crooked and it was just not good thankfully this time around I'm a little bit more prepared and it's going a whole lot smoother I've actually already done the difficult uh, photo etch parts like these chest vents here it's got a uh, let's see I think this one's loose enough I can pull it out it's got like a main grill plate back there and then it's got three little fins inside the chest vent and those are metal it just fits in like so and looks very very nice uh, they're kinda loose so uh, I'm unfortunately have to swap these out to do the color change for the standard Nero and Nero trainer type so I might put like a little bit of blue tack in there or something just to temporarily hold them in place because I can't glue them on otherwise I won't be able to switch the parts out also uh, right here inside this white cheek vent there's some photo etch parts that's like a little three layer vent down in there that turned out halfway decent this was actually uh, more difficult to do than these chest vents also there's this little uh, vent that goes under the crotch that's got five uh, little slots in it and then it's got a little photo etch part down on the bottom that holds all five of those pieces into place uh, also, these metal thrusters that go on the backpack uh, have photo etch inside them that turned out pretty decent as well. This one actually wasn't very hard. This was the easiest one to do. All you had to do was, uh, see it came on this little thing and you just had to bend the four little prongs up and then just glue it in there. Uh, this time around I used just regular tacky glue instead of super glue. It dries slower. Uh, but it's uh, got a bit more flexibility to it, and it doesn't like uh, stick to your hands and junk. Because the last time I did photo etch, I had like photo etch parts sticking to my hands because I was using the super glue, and you know it cures instantly to your hands, but doesn't always cure instantly to the parts. It's just it's aggravating. I hate super glue. I just I want that to be on the record. I despise super glue. So uh, also, I don't know if I showed this off in a video or not, but I got some. Uh, Tamiya photo etch scissors for cutting out the parts from the photo etch runner and these have been great they've worked out really really nicely so uh, basically all I got left is just little flat photo etch parts that are just going to be glued right on top of uh, just like little ex uh, external detail parts uh, now that I've got all the vents and stuff done so the rest of this stuff will all be easy and now that the photo etch is all done, I am installing the metal parts. Now, uh, I just got this old clear box thingy because it helps keep everything organized, but we got several of these aluminum bits that are going to be placed in various spots on the kit. Uh, some of them are these little minus mold things. Some of them are these little uh, metal bars. Let's see, like here's one on the front skirt, this is on the binders, got them on the chest as well. I really like these because they add a nice real, real metallic pop to the uh, visual of the kit. And when they hit the light just right and it reflects off of them, uh, they really stand out nicely. So some of these I'm having to glue in, some of them I can just uh, push in because I pre-drilled the holes, but it just depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So anyway, not too awfully difficult, not nearly as difficult as the photo etch parts. Okay, so I am just now finishing up final assembly, uh, just putting in all the wires. Got the lens for the uh, scope. 
It's actually a mechanical part in there and just got a little LED light. Uh, the oops, LED for the eyes. And it's going sort of smooth, well, about as smoothly as, as it can. So, shouldn't be too much longer, and this guy will be complete. Okay, and after about three months of hard, tedious work, the G System 172 scale Nero is finally complete. And he's uh, quite a bit sturdier than he was when I just did the test fit before everything was painted. But he's still not super sturdy. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to build a base for him. Something simple, just like a little uh, like one of those old clear acrylic things for him to stand on and then just like a clear rod that'll go up and attach to the backpack or the crotch or something just cause uh, like he's standing up just fine right now and he can balance even with that gigantic heavy backpack but uh, you know if I were to walk through the room or something I don't want him to topple over inside the display case so I think if I just make a little something for him to stand on should be uh, good to go. The decals came out a lot nicer than I thought. I was worried about uh, those gray decals clashing with the color scheme too much, but I think they actually turned out pretty darn nice. They're subtle enough that they don't detract from the kit and the color scheme, but they're visible enough that you can still tell that they're there. So, uh, very, very happy with the way this guy has turned out, I think. Something I didn't record on camera, uh, namely because it took forever, was me uh, wiring up the head. The head was such a pain in the ass to uh, get the LEDs wired up in. The beam rifle, not so much. It, it was okay, but the head was a huge pain in the ass. But I did finally get it done. Had to order uh, some... I broke the original switch that G-System gave me, so I ordered a new switch and some new wires. And... Uh, eventually got it all working. Uh, let's see. Turn that on right. Come on. There we go. Destroyed his head correctly again. And anyway, as you can see, I got the forehead, oops, forehead light and the visor lit up, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. Beam rifle. I don't know if I actually want to have him lift his arm up. Well, I guess it'll be okay. Maybe. Anyway, uh, switch right there on top. And it's just got a little light inside there. That arm down. Anyway, so yeah, he's the hip joints are what the real problem is as far as him standing up. These hip joints are not very good, in my opinion. I think G System could have done a lot better job with the uh, these ratcheting joints. The ratcheting joints that have plastic parts work fine, but the ratcheting joint that use resin parts are pretty terrible. So, uh, yeah. I think that's something they could definitely work on in the future. I think that's probably the reason they switched over to the full plastic inner frame for a lot of their kits because the ratcheting joints with the resin parts is just not working out very well. But uh, the ones that use plastic, like the for the binders up here and the elbow joints and the uh, the upper knee joint, use plastic parts for the ratcheting, and it, those actually work really, really well. Um, I'm just gonna wait and do the standard Nero parts uh, when I do the completion video which will be the next video I upload after this one uh, I'm not gonna bother doing that in this video right here but you'll see those tomorrow I guess cuz now that I'm finally finished with this I'm gonna go ahead and take photos and do the video and then I'll upload the completion video next 
So, uh, really pleased with how this turned out. Um, it was very, very involved. It took a bit longer than I thought it would, but then again, I painted like four small uh, commission kits while I was working on this, so that definitely took away time from Nero. And uh, I'm really happy that swapping out the standard parts and trainer parts uh, worked out well and I'm very pleased with the overall look of it. Uh, definitely a more pleasant building experience than my first G-System kit, the XS Gundam, even though uh, I did complain quite a bit about the wiring in the head and the uh, hip joints, but overall definitely a recommended kit. Uh, one of the better resin kits I've built and definitely is going to be in my display case for quite a while. I have a habit of uh, selling a lot of my kits not long after I build them and I think I'm going to hang on to this one for a while because this is a kit that I just bought because I really like the design and it's it was kind of a holy grail kit for me. Maybe not the highest priority holy grail kit, but definitely a grail kit nonetheless. And I'm thinking I'm going to hang on to this guy for a while. So that does it for this video and this work in progress series and this project. And I'm super excited for my next project, which I think you guys will find pretty interesting. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys next time.